Hello everyone, wherever you are, welcome to The Narrative. I'm here today with Axel from Pop Daddy to talk to you guys about what they do or what he does down up um, down in Wellington, which is the capital of New Zealand. For those who are watching it from overseas, that's where the beehive is. Whenever they talk about the beehive, that's where the beehive is in the capital of New Zealand, Wellington. So thank you for joining us this afternoon. And I'm going to let um, Axel introduce himself and then we'll get into the meeting meet guts of things. Cool. All right. Uh, hey, I'm Axel. <laughs> um, I am also Pop Daddy. I've uh, been living in Wellington for the last several years, originally from a little place called Christchurch. You may know Christchurch due to the uh, huge earthquake we had. That was a lot of fun. <laughs> mm. uh, I'm an actor, I'm a filmmaker, and uh, I'm a pop culture enthusiast. Excellent. That's a lot of things we have in common, apart from the acting but so now let's start with the beginning of you know let's start from building up from the ground up what got you into um you know getting um getting interested in pop culture and what was the start for you for, for this all right so taking us back to uh 2001 here i am sitting in a cinema not even realizing my life is about to change hmm. a particular movie starts to play the Lord of the Rings, the Fellowship of the Ring. Uh, from there, it gave me a huge wake-up call and uh, made me realize that I want to be in that. Uh, so that's where my acting came from. Uh, Jack Black was also a huge influence on that. Uh, and ever since then, I was obsessed with Lord of the Rings for 15 years. I studied everything about the movies. Mm. Um, and from there, it trickled into stuff like Marvel, The Walking Dead, uh lucifer um you know all sorts of crazy things like that so yeah awesome so when did you actually get into acting like after having watched that in 2011 did you say or 2000 2001 yeah. yeah uh so i've been acting for between 10 and 12 years now is this like uh like we're talking about indie here or we're talking about short films or we're talking about major films um involvement um, so I've been, a, like when it came, comes to major films, I've been an extra mortal engine. So I was on Peter Jackson's unit, which was pretty cool. Um, awesome. I've been in two feature films. One was an indie film called a motel in a hard place, which was about renting out a motel next to a prison, breaking this uh, guy out of prison next door. So mm -hmm. that was a lot of fun. Uh, then I was in a movie called mega time squad, which, uh, traveled the world in festivals. Um, and it was a time travel movie, had the likes of Johnny Bruff in it from What We Do in the Shadows. Uh, so, yeah. Now, what was that one by the same guy that did that uh, Haunted House one, or the Demons in Haunted House? Uh, if you're thinking of the vampire mockumentary. No, no, um, no. One earlier than that. It was like... Um, oh, gosh. It's the guy who did the one with the, with the guns that type, um, like... Think screwed to his hand. That same um, act, um, director. Uh, Guns Akimbo. Yeah, the guy who, before that movie came out. There was Deathgasm. Yeah, that one. Is it the same um, director who did this one, or no? Not this. No, it wasn't Jason Lee Heldon. However, the guy that was the lead guy in uh, Deathgasm, I yeah. worked with with on Mega Time Squad. Awesome. It's really cool. Yeah, I mean, like, good old Milo I, I, Cawthorn. He's a good mate. That's the thing about the Wellington scene, isn't it? Like you, you um, because it's been such a huge amount of money being put into that uh, industry in Wellington, uh, in, in cinema, cinematography and cinema and all that. And um, there's so much, you know, that you can basically, I guess, that so interconnectedness that goes on because of people that know each other and actors and extras and like you're saying you've been on this one then you know this one from this one it's really cool i mean so having done that what was it like uh being part of those bigger movies and also part, being of the smaller movies as well um so mortal engines uh the only reason i agreed to do that was because i was going to be on peter jackson's unit uh so from that experience seeing peter at work paid a lot more than what the money did it was the sentimental mm. value of what was going on that i was there for not the not the dollar bills at the end of the day uh so that was phenomenal um uh, like i said i was just background uh for that yeah. so it wasn't too bad um but yeah being part of two feature films 
um, that aren't as big as that kind of thing. Uh, yep. It's a really good experience. Um, I remember a day on set for Mega Time Squad. We were out one of because it was shot in Auckland. That one. Um, we were out at uh, some bowling club or some RSA or something, and we had a whole bunch of extras for that day. And I knew what it was like to feel a little, you know, like a castaway, so to speak. You know, I'm just a background. I, I'm not. I'm yep. not important. Uh, so I made sure to go and chat to the extras and ask if they need anything. Are they all right? Um, mm. You know, are they feeling good? They know what they're doing. You know, I make them feel welcome because yeah. it's, it was something I always wanted. Uh, my acting work as an extra sort of started on Outrageous Fortune and Nothing Trivial. And, okay. you know, you always did feel like, you know, you weren't meant to be there, but you needed to be there, if that makes sense. Mm. So, yeah, that's why I made sure to you know, invite these extras and make them feel welcome. So, but you know, it's, um, in comparison, it's of course, when you're doing a big film, there's a lot of stress and stuff and you've got to make sure that you a, keep your mouth shut and B yeah. do your job, especially as a background, but mm. it's a lot more fun when you're one of the leads on a, a sh uh, you know, a, a low budget feature film. Um, there's more freedom, like me and Tim Van Dammen, who did Romeo and Juliet, a love song in 2012. Uh, you know, him and I, we'd have a lot of interactions over the course of Mega Time Squad, and I'd give him ideas and say, hey, you know, what about this? What about that? And he was open to hearing those ideas. Uh, so, yeah, that's probably the comparisons bet between the two. Yeah, I think, like, when you're more independent, um, you know, on the independent um, budget, you kind of, like, want to see, because you always think about, like, how can I do it better? but cheaper all the time and your brain's like going if you know and you're more open to ideas because of that because you're thinking well somebody has a you know who's probably worked with this this equipment and knows how to do it better or something like that i think that's kind of um that's the cutting the teeth thing isn't it like i mean in the industry because you if you if you're doing like uh independent circuits and not only i mean like you got to come up to auckland from wellington now was that a paid gig to come up here and or did you um, have to pay your own way so when I did Mega Time Squad, I had just moved to Auckland. Um, mm -hmm. And that story was a three-month live story. I was only up in Auckland before I moved back down to Wellington for about three months. Mm -hmm. um, but, you yeah, know, we got paid. Um, I mean, it was just yeah, your typical kind of low-budget pay. But, you know, at the end of the day, it put a, cheese, a cheeseburger in the mouth and clothes on my back. So, you know, yeah. it was all good. <laughs> so um, what's it like, um, like, because you've experienced both the uh, short film, I mean, the TV short film, uh, uh, independent film, and also the feature film. What's it been like? Um, so like, I mean, you've already said about how experiences, but what did you personally get out of having to gone through all that stages? Uh, so when I was doing extra work back in the start of my career, the main thing I got from that was understanding how a film set works or a TV set works, sort of understanding what, was the responsibility of all the core roles that were there, like the gaffer, the sound guy, uh, director of photography, that kind of thing. Um, and the main thing that I got out of it myself is I wanted to do that. I wanted to start making my own films. I haven't yet, <laughs> yeah. but, you know, I want to. Um, and there's a lot of ideas that are circulating in my head. Um, so, yeah, it, it just gave me that, that boost to get more into the visual media scene. Did you, uh, did you just... Um ever decide, you know, I mean, think about actually going to school for that or have you been to school for that or have you thought, no, I'm just going to learn it as I go along practically? Um, well, some people say you can be born with it. Um, mm. I, I believe probably about 80% of my talent I've been born with. 20% mm. I learned through different training and stuff. Like I, I was part of a, uh, a theatre school in Christchurch mm. and each term you'd practice a script ready for, the, um, for live theatre but at that same time, you're kind of getting directed how to do that. Uh, so it wasn't like acting training. It was more like training for that particular theatre piece. And a lot of that really helped into, uh, into you know, crafting kind of where I'm at today, yeah. I suppose. If that answers your question. <laughs> how long was that for? Um, so I did, I think, about six productions with them over the course of five years because I didn't stay in Christchurch for um, – you know, to do them all. But yeah, probably about five projects I did with uh, original scripts. Awesome. So when you, you know, did you get in, like, 
was that because you wanted to get into um, film or what uh, and because of the influence from um the lord of rings in 2020 20, um 2001 or was it like okay uh i'm gonna did you go to work for on short films and then go back to school um do some theater work or did you go to theater work and then move across to getting some positions in um short films uh or, the best thing the best thing as an actor that you can do is continue working on your craft uh, mm. If that's going and doing a bit of theatre just to tie you over, then so be it. You learn a lot from that. And obviously theatre, you've got to be a bit more out there and, hey, you know, whereas TV, you keep it quiet and have an interaction like we are right now, you know. Um, yeah. So you get to learn all those different aspects. For me, it was always film work I wanted to do, film and TV, mm. not theatre. But I did the theatre to kind of work on those skills. So Awesome. So, uh, so you've got... 2000 um 2001 i keep thinking 2021 all the time 2001 <laughs> uh you got peter jackson got the bug uh for seeing cinema and saying you know but were you in wellington at the time when when you saw that or were you somewhere else uh so i was born and raised in crush it so i was still down south for that okay so from did you move away from Wellington? I mean, so crisis to Wellington after that, or how, how soon did, was the movement? Um, so the first what time you... I moved to Wellington was in 2006. Okay. Um, and that was sort of hoping to sort of, cause you know, King Kong and Narnia was out and I was like, Oh, maybe I can get me a piece of that pie. Yeah. Um, cutting a long story short, I didn't, uh, the, the coolest thing that happened to me around that time is I worked for Blue Bridge, which was one of the Cook Street fairies. Um, that's as cool as it got. <laughs> um, and then I did a bit of traveling. So I lived in Auckland, went back to Christchurch and whatnot. Um, and I've been back in Wellington. Fiance and I have been together, well, coming up six years next year. So yeah, just over five years this time around. Okay. So when was your first, uh, little, um, you know, bit into film itself, like, I mean, short film, TV, whatever, but one was a step from yeah. theatre into that movement? Um, so I did a bit of theatre prior to 2006 before I moved to Wellington. Um, when I moved to Wellington in 2006, I did a little bit of training at, oh, what was it called? Uh, WIPAC, Wellington Performing Arts Centre, I think it was mm -hmm. called. Um, and we had a, uh, my tutor was Vanessa Stacy. If you might know her, if you've seen the tribe, old school Kiwi TV series, the tribe. Um, I, so she probably better. I don't usually watch TV. So yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, she was my tutor. I don't know um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it was probably around, I know 2005, 2006, I started sort of picking that up. So in that case, I've been acting for. Bloody hell, almost 15 years. <laughs> wow. Well, yeah, well, I mean, it's, yeah. it's like, I mean, you don't know, um, notice how long you've been doing something until you actually have to go this, 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 and try to add the numbers up. That's why, like, going back to 2001, going, okay, let's get the steps going here because then we can arrive at what we actually need to talk about, which is Pop Daddy. So yeah. um, amongst, um, like, with all these different films, uh, you've, got, you've got Mortal Engine, um, You've got um, Mega Time um, Time Squad as an independent feature, independent, and then you've got a whole bunch of short films. Plus, you've got TV experience. What do you? Th I mean, do you want? Are you look? You want to carry on with this craft? I mean, or you know, because of course you're doing the shops and stuff. But uh, and you're thinking about making your own films and stuff. You're picking up all these skills as you're going along. Do you think you want to be behind the camera more than in front of the camera, or or write or you know or work on you know run around helping the extras and stuff you know or what is it called um ad right Do yeah, yeah, AD slash or, runner. You know? yeah yeah um i mean look at me i've got a face built for camera <laughs> rather than behind it um yeah. yeah no i prefer to be in front of the camera um uh, it's not as possible as it used to be um due to reasons uh, yeah. But whenever sort of something pops up in Wellington now, I sort of pick, stick up my hand. So the last thing I did, uh, which was a Wellington-based thing, was a commercial for Acuro Insurance, uh, mm -hmm. which ran on uh, nationwide TV for about seven weeks. Um, okay. And I managed to do that because it was Wellington-based. 
Um, so I haven't kind of given it up. I've been focusing more on my YouTube channel and stuff more so because I can do that. And I know that, you know, I, I won't get turned down at an audition to make a YouTube channel. Um, yeah, so, yeah but I mean, I've control. always enjoyed the craft of being in front rather than behind. So, mm. and, and plus you're in control of your own, you know, whatever you're putting out. Um, hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. Um, so now, so how did you get onto um, actually deciding? Well, I'm going to do an online store. And um, you know, of course, there's. I mean, I've done that. I've tried that myself in the past as well. Back in, gosh, 2010 or something like that, years ago. Yeah. Um, but so, how did you arrive from going to acting? You know, doing all the bits and pieces amongst all these 15 years. And then decide, um, okay, you know what? I'm going to get into pop culture. And where did that love actually start from? Is it still with the 2001 or? Because you look That's like a young where guy. where it originated you. from. Yeah. yeah. Lord of the Rings is what kicked it all off and sparked it all up. Um, right. So I suppose as of recently, um, what was it? September last year, I started up my media company, photography and video production. Um, and then it started getting a bit quiet. Uh, so then, you know, I was like, well, I'm not happy with the YouTube channel I'm currently doing. Uh, and at the time I had a channel called Lexa Dixon, which was um, sort of vlogs and, you know, traveling around New Zealand and mm -hmm. different pieces, bits and pieces like that. And I got my first mystery box. At, um I think it was at Armageddon earlier this year. Uh, yeah. I, I went to Card Merchant and I got, I think, three mystery boxes. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to open these on camera. And then, the, the, then it sort of stemmed from there. One of my mates came in. He's like, I've got a name for your new YouTube channel. I'm like, oh, yeah. He's like, Pop Daddy. I'm like, um, that sounds a bit <laughs> weird, but okay, yep. I'll go with it, you know. Um, so, yeah, and then obviously with more mystery boxes, more unboxing of boxes and all that kind of stuff, I ended up getting a stack of Funko mm. Pops. So I decided, you know what, I'm going to sell the ones I don't want on Trade Me, keep the ones I do. Mm. And then from there, I was like, you know what, maybe I should make this a bit bigger than what it is, start my own website, and let's do it. Yeah. So that's kind of where that kind of came from. So, Well, I mean, the thing is, like, uh, because of last year's lockdown uh, and this year's now with being in, in our third or fourth week, I, I can't even keep up with what week we're on anymore. Uh, it's safe day today, right? <laughs> I, I, maybe it's Sunday, I don't know. But the thing is, like, so, I mean, my concern has always been for small business because I used to be in small business. I used to have uh, my own comic shop and stuff. Um, yeah. And, you know, and I, so whenever something like this happens, my whole concern is, okay, so how is it going to affect this brick and mortar people living from week to week? Usually it's month to month at most because I was talking about one of my, um, you know, uh, friends who's also part of my business and i was just saying like it's usually around about two months out of the year that you actually is profit you know one to two months if you're lucky maybe more but you know when you're only owning a brick and mortar shop that's basically how it works you're like you got wages you got overheads you got to pay your bills your wholesale freight and all that and you probably end up with about two month to two months worth of profit in your bank account mm. now if you're closed down for a month or two months and you're, you know, and you don't have that funding to back that up. You're closing. So I'm seeing shops in town closing all the time in our city. Uh, have you noticed that in Wellington as well since last year? Have you noticed some small, um, you know, small brick and mortar shops closing? Sorry, I didn't catch any of that. Your uh, vocals oh, are a bit crackly. Sorry. So, so yeah. um, like with the lockdown last year, with the lockdown last year and then lockdown this year, have you noticed like small stores closing because of what you know because of lockdowns last year oh yeah yeah no no, no. there's definitely businesses closing and um and businesses on hold like prime example october 2019 i got the i got the dream job apart from acting i got the dream job i became a lord of the rings tour guide okay july thanks to covid i lost that job yeah <laughs> So, yes, there are difficulties. And as I said, you know, 2001 was where everything stemmed up. So being a Lord of the Rings tour guide was yeah. phenomenal. Um, but, yeah, COVID screwed that. So Yeah, because, I mean, th that's a lot of learning. You've got to know what you're talking about 
you know of the law and stuff and uh yeah, yeah. You know, it's it's basically like me trying to go to write for the x-men and i've got to make sure i know all the x-men characters that i've got to think about right and yeah. whereas if i'm writing my own thing it's easier probably more harder because those characters don't exist any at the moment i got to create them myself so with the unboxing and stuff and selling that i've noticed on your website it's not just funko pops that you're selling what you know there's other diamond stuff that i noticed what is that all about um so i kind of wanted to do something where any fan of pop culture can come to my uh my site and you know it'd be like an open book a one-stop shop um there's a lot of a lot of people following the diamond painting um aspect of pop culture at the moment and i mean if you walk into eb games you're not going to get diamond painting if you walk into a what convenience store you're not yeah. going to get funko pops so it was a matter of putting the two together and saying, hey, look, we're a pop culture website. You can grab all your pop culture needs. So we've got like action figures, we've got keychains, we've got cosplay uh, costumes and props, um, mm. Funko Pops, of course. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah, but pretty much is, like a one-stop shop. What is diamond painting? Because I, I don't understand what that is. Uh, so diamond painting, um, I don't personally do it myself. My mother does and my uh, fiance does. Uh, but diamond painting is you get a you, you get like a picture, right? You get a bunch mm -hmm. of diamonds that go with it and you get a diamond pen and it's kind of like paint by number, but you're filling in the oh, dots with okay. diamonds. Yeah. Right. So, so it's that's like pretty much diamond painting. So it's basically stitching for uh, for 2021. Yeah, pretty much. You could put it like that. Yeah, <laughs> I can see why. I can see why your, um, you know, your mum and your fiance would be into that because my mum's into yeah. knitting as well. So you know, she's put some of her stuff online to just to show yeah. to us. That's pretty interesting. I didn't realize that they'd been. I, I think I did see a Batman one that they recently did. It's quite. It's like fifty bucks or something. And I was like, yeah, that's, that's, that's just not me. You know, I want to need almost three years to complete that one. <laughs> yeah, I'm more like, okay, I'm just going to go with the figurines. I'll do deal with that myself. <laughs> um, so how is that going for you? Did you find like, um, you know, having, um, having started the online store, how has it been going for you as a online retailer? Uh, because have you seen like with, the, especially with the lockdown, right? So three weeks of lockdown, uh, have you noticed that more people are going to the website or before that or do you or prior to this um, like i say three weeks period before to three weeks yeah, now yeah, yeah have you seen an uptick in your business i mean the the website slash online store excluding the trade me like the actual mm. shopify site that i've got mm. i've only had that sort of going for about a month um and from everybody i've spoken to about you know looking at my analytics and stuff um my business isn't doing too bad for a business of where it is at the moment um i can't say if it's gone up or down during lockdown just because of how new it is mm. um but it's definitely getting a lot of traction and you know i've just opened up about a week or two ago to australia um so mm. we're hoping to get a bit of traction from that as well um but yeah okay. it, it, it's it's getting there <laughs> what's it what's freight like to australia uh so the minimum freight to australia is 30 bucks and that's up to three kgs yeah that's so not like if they ordered a box of six funko pops it'd probably be like 30 bucks mm. so up to three kgs funko pops don't um you know it's more size isn't it because of that i mean i i pay like about gosh eight dollars this week to get one funko pop up because yeah. even though the funko pop itself that it's a bought of um of marketplace only cost me three bucks and i already had the figure and but like i wanted you know it was like i already had it this one here from saga it's just like saga you're frozen oh there we go oh yep 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 so i already got one but i thought i'll get another one yeah fair enough <laughs> <laughs> because it was only three bucks so i've got two yeah. of them now and i'm thinking like um i might actually i might actually uh do a comp with this for um for something next year because we've got um yeah. we've got our because we do our uh, convention so 
we might do that as a gift um as a prize for because it's only cost me three bucks but all yeah. up it cost me eleven dollars because of eight dollars just to get it up to me <laughs> that's what i was wondering about the freight thing so you know it's, yeah yeah it's, it's a size right so i mean yeah three kgs of these would be like the whole friggin you know cubic meter or something yeah yeah so yeah it goes on it goes on measurement and goes on size mm. um yeah so it's all it's all within the the shopify platform that you sort of work it or all out so you're not looking at a personal loss of a hundred dollars shipping you know? mm. <laughs> so but yeah talking about giveaways we've um currently got shredder from teenage mutant ninja turtles we're doing a giveaway for him um mm. and we're also giving away a 45 dollar iron man funko um at, uh, for this month only so giveaways are definitely are definitely a good thing to do yeah i noticed that so like you had one um couple um like last like last time i saw you post about that's when i thought i paid someone cool to get on to, um you know bring on so what got you started doing the giveaways um well i don't do pop daddy just for money making i mean if i did then i wouldn't even bother doing a youtube channel i like the customer interaction i like yeah. making sure that the customer's got a smile on their face um, I mean, even some of the products that uh, we sell, we've got to get in from overseas. And I'm all, you know, not always, because it'd just be a pain in the ass, but, you know, I'm often checking in on the customer and saying, hey, look, you know, your item's expected to be here, this and this and this, you know, making sure that the customer is genuinely happy. Um, so if I'm able to give something away, people love giveaways, people love free shit. So yeah. I'm making someone's day, you know, like last month. And you, this is probably the one you saw. I gave away B rabbit from eight mile, of course, M&M. &M. Um, no, it was one before that, I think. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, that was the one I did la um, last month and the, the interaction and the feedback from people was great, you know, mm. and I got to put a, a smile on someone's face by saying, Hey, here you go. This is for you. It's for free. You know, don't even yeah. have to pay shipping. <laughs> so, exactly. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a cool thing. I mean, like, um, I remember because I used to work for about almost fifteen years in sales, uh, from like from starting to like senior, from assistant to senior, and the the bosses would get all this free stuff from their suppliers, which would just sit on the on the shelves, in their office, mm. or in the back, and you never get it. It was yeah. like why? Why don't you give it out to us? Because it's just going to sit there and get dust. And over years, I yeah. see them grow dust, and I'm like, and so now that I'm kind of like a boss, I go, how would I want? I remember back to those times, and I go, man, that sucked. So how do hmm. I look after my guys who are with me? And what what would be really cool if I do this? And you know. Would, what, what if I buy them this or if I gift them that? When's their birthday, you know, sort of thing. And yeah, it yeah, kind of, yeah. um, you, 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 like you're saying earlier about being extra, right? And you're walking around, and that's where my head clicked. I was like, right then, I was thinking, I remember being working and all that, and being able to just put yourself in their shoes because you've experienced how you've been treated, and you go, yeah, I don't like that. I'd be like to be treated a bit better. And so now you're doing that, you know, and I mm -hmm. think you get remembered for that i think that's the one thing especially when you're on your film and stuff i think people will remember you for that and they'll remember that you're one of these um um you know what you're one of the people that were there at that time who they recognize and they'll go oh you know who who did you you know is there anybody you know that would be good to work on this you know we're looking for some extras and stuff and that also mm -hmm. because of the fact that you guys have a smaller you're not a small community a big community but small in the sense that it's a network of people that you know know each other i think that's the benefit you guys get because you inter interact so well in wellington because it's, it's a city of you know basically cinema and acting in new zealand yeah, um yeah, so yeah. were you like were, do you know anybody that was affected by this whole um debacle with um the lord of rings series prequel series that they, were, they did and then they decided they were not going to do the second season were you part of that, oh, or did you know yeah, the, part of that? they're moving it out in new zealand yeah i know mm. somebody uh who's actually quite close to me who was affected by that mm. me 
<laughs> well, you I'm not there. happy about that at all. <laughs> yeah. Middle words is the... here. I mean, come on. But, you know. Yeah. Were you part of that uh, series as an extra or something? Or um, No, I'd always said that I, I won't go up to Auckland to be an extra for it, but if they're willing to give me at least one line, sweet as, I'll do it. Yeah. I didn't hear anything. So mm. maybe I look too dwarven, maybe. Well, you get the look. <laughs> I mean, that's the thing. It's like you, you have the look, and I think that's uh, um, it's just it's made made for that role, right? Because all the dwarves yeah, and yeah. stuff. I've got a friend up well, here I want, who. Um, I was this close to being in the Hobbit. This close. They rung me up and they're like, "All right, so we're needing dwarf extras. It's going to be a dwarf movement class, a costume fitting, and a day's work. Are you interested?" And I was I was living in Auckland at this time, and I was like, "Hell yeah, yeah, I'm definitely keen. Sweet, let me know when you need me." Did I get a phone call back? No. Yeah. So I got that close. And then um, a friend of mine, good friend of mine, uh, he worked on the set of Dale up at Mount Crawford in uh, Wellington um, as a, a crewman. Um, he spent months sleeping in his car just to be part of it. So, yeah. yeah. It's it's like, it's kind of like that. Um, it's one of those things you want to check, right? It's one of those you know, it's like a little thing in your life that you want to just tick off and say, yeah, there, I was in that thing. And you can yeah. live, you know, kind of like that story you tell around to your mates for the rest of your life or your kids and their, you know, your grandkids and all that. And yeah. who you yeah. met, when you met them, oh, yeah, I was with Peter Jackson and, you know, blah, blah, yeah. blah. It's one of those, I mean, I think it's because that's what we gather, right? Because you want to be a storyteller, you want to be a filmmaker. These are all the stories mm -hmm. that you gather about and you become part of your life. And then you kind of, uh, because all these things like, um, they become dialogue and, you know, story plots or story ideas that you mash up in your head. And you think of like, how do people react in this situation? I mean, that's what I find because like, I mean, after years of frigging, you know, being in sales and watching people, how they interact and how they talk yeah. to each other, um, because there's a difference between dialogue and co conversation. And, and a lot of people that like, tell stories or make films that cost a lot of movie, a lot of money, millions, mm. Mm. but because it's dialogue and not conversation, it, nobody remembers them. Yeah. And uh, yeah. have you, yeah. have you um, like, you must, you, like me, you must have watched tons of movies. And so what are those, like, what are your favorite movies apart from, you know, Lord of the Rings that really stick out in your head? <laughs> Um, well, firstly, just in regards to, you know, what you were saying before, working on something, just so you can go around and say, I worked with this person. Um, I became a, a shuttle driver for the film Daffodils, uh, another Kiwi film. And the main reason I wanted to work on that is because Rose McIver was on that. And you might know Rose from iZombie. You might know Rose from Once Upon a Time. Yeah. Um, anyways, they had the hot. premiere on Valentine's yeah. Day. Um, and my fiance and I went along, I got to meet Rose, like actually meet her. And, um, I got my two Funko pops of hers signed. Um, awesome. so yeah, the reason I worked on that is so now I can say I've met Rose McIver and I've worked for her because yeah. <laughs> she but is a beauty. She um, is. It's amazing. And I, and I just, yeah. uh, I love, um, I think I've seen every episode of Sephora somewhere in about fifth season or something when they put when they put the walls up and stuff, I, oh, yeah, kind yeah, of, yeah. something in their writing just kind of went flat and I just couldn't stick with it. But I did. Uh, it's like people don't like Walking Dead anymore. I'm still hooked. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, 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 I gave up after third season. Yeah. yeah. The one TV series I don't like and I tried a season and a half and I just couldn't do it and there's going to be hate. I do not like Game of Thrones. I didn't watch the last season. I read the book instead. Yeah, but yeah, I, I couldn't, couldn't get into it. Yeah, I couldn't wait for the um, like I couldn't wait for the last season, which which I'm glad I didn't. And yeah. so I read the book, and then I went, yeah, I can't be bothered. Yeah, and it was yeah. just like, I think um, there are so many things that, I mean, it, it's I think they did it well enough. Got a lot of um, Game of Thrones. Um, they want to do um, time. Wheel of Time, I mean, you know, it's one of the another one of the big, huge, like, some um, fantasy sci-fi fantasy books, and mm. um, you know, the I think it's Jordan. No, 
I can't remember the name of the guy, but they they want to turn that into a TV series. And I'm like, there's some things you just can't, you need to leave alone because, yeah, it, yeah, yeah. because I mean, the, Lord of the Rings was great and will always be great. Hobbit is okay, but I can't, mm. forgettable. I think Lord of the Rings, the trilogy is just the best, you know? But yeah, it, yeah. It just left it as a trilogy and just left it alone. Now that with the prequel, I'm like, I can't even be bothered. Um, I mean, I've got, <laughs> I'm going to like, watch. Um, I've got uh, the scene book. I've got of Lord of the Rings. I've got DVDs. I've got the trilogy yeah. book. Uh, yeah. I've got a little Hobbiton, uh, what you call it, um, magnet, you know, got a couple of I've got some here. of the mini epics. Little Gimli. <laughs> you know, the other thing yeah. is, the, that is cool. Yeah. One of the things I was going to mention about cosplay um, is up here. We have a gentleman called um, Wayne. Man, I don't want to get into my, um, go off the site because it's going to mess up my thing. It's already messing up my um, Wi-Fi. I don't know why. But Wayne's work, Wayne's workshop on here on Facebook, right? There's yeah. a gentleman here, an elder, older gentleman, or what would they call them? Statesman. Yeah, an elder. That's it. Elder statesman. He is. Um, <laughs> he's. He's. He runs his own. Like he's got a workshop that he, um, you know, invites choirs enthusiasts to come and build their own stuff. He's got three D printer and all that, and his little space in his garage is cooked. It, um, set it up as, but he. If I remember right, I can't remember if it was if he did Gimli. I think he did Gimli, right? As a full cosplay, like he's Far a big, yeah, he's a solid dude. He's short, yeah. solid, dude, and yes, he, he look. I think he's won awards for that as well. But um, yeah, yeah. So I think the, as we like, you know, more people get into like um, pop culture and stuff, and the thing that you've added cosplay to your uh, to your site which is different a lot of people don't do cosplay to your site i mean when i did my uh, when i had my shop in 2014 15 i actually had cosplay i had anime stuff in there but now like i mean we're seeing i mean over the years it's just growing bigger and bigger the whole oh, cosplay yeah. thing it's a, it's a huge yeah. thing um i mean like there's comic books that actually have the cosplayers on them you know who mm -hmm. pick the cos big co um, best cosplays and do that it's, it's kind of a cheat you know, mm. having a photo <laughs> instead of a freaking artwork on a comic book, yeah, but you kind of yeah. like go, yeah, that's a really cool cosplay. So I mean, that's probably had <laughs> just as money put into that and time and effort as it takes someone to draw yeah. something really well. So you know, two hundred yeah. US kind of works out. Um, so <laughs> have you had a lot of um, a lot of um, sales and um and interest in the cosplay scene for your guys shop um i can't say i have yet the main reason i put that in is because i love cosplay myself uh photographing it doing cosplay um two of my biggest costumes that i've ever done is crowley from supernatural uh, i got to mark, meet mark shepherd wearing that costume and he said everybody who meets him needs to dress up like i did so yep. that was a nice feeling uh, and I'm then one year i did Crowley. What what is Crowley dressed up as? He he was the demon, the the like the devil, um, in Supernatural. The one was Sam and Dean Winchester. So he That's he wore like, like a red, long black his trench coat. Redhead, right? and, is his mum the redhead? Is his mum the redhead? Yeah 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 yeah. Yes. Um. Yeah. Oh, written, oh, not Regina. Um. Regina. It's not yeah Regina. yeah that's it yeah no. yeah. Um, yeah, and I mean, then one I year love, I did. I love Supernatural uh, as well. So I mean, yeah. I didn't see the last two or three seasons, but I watched every other one before that. So good, so good. But yeah, one year I did Alan from The Hangover, and I had a fake box of roofies. <laughs> <laughs> so that's kind of what triggered the cosplay part for Pop Daddy. Is I love cosplay, and yeah. uh, as a photographer, that's one thing I really enjoy. Apart from toy photography. Um, Quick plug, Toytography NZ on Instagram. Um, 
apart from toy photography, I do enjoy cosplay photography as well. So it's T O Y T O G R A P H Y N Z. Toytography N Z. I'm trying to spell this the right way. I'm sure I'm going to butcher <laughs> this. Is it dot code NZ or just NZ? No, nah, it's on Instagram. So that's my username, Toytography NZ. Okay. Let me see if I got this right. Toy Tog. So T O Y T O Griffey NZ. Tog. Okay, I see. Yeah. Yeah. So T O Y T O. Yeah. G R A P H Y NZ. Okay, let's try this. I'm still going to mess it up, I'm sure. <laughs> this is why I need a producer. There we go. So, yes, Perfect. I've got some of my mini epics hanging out at Kaitoki, which they use for Rivendell for Lord of the Rings. Um, I took some photos of my mini epics of the Lord of the Rings line, like the Balrog I showed you earlier. Yeah. Um, so I've got some of those photos on there. Trying to get some of the Funkos. Um, but, yeah. So, awesome. yeah, cosplay is just... I know it's been a big part of me for the last, I don't know, maybe four years. I kind of really got into it. So, so how much money have you pers do you think you personally put into doing your, your, um, your costumes? Um, <laughs> I usually just hire them or buy the t-shirts and stuff. So I don't know maybe maximum one fifty. Mm. Yeah. I think that's what so, Alan cost me was one fifty. So you don't actually go, um, do you, go out and you don't have anybody that you can sew it for you or you don't commission other people to do it for you? Um, no, uh, nightlife workshop is fantastic though. Um, he makes a lot of props and stuff. Mm. I did a photo shoot for him as, with his Skyrim costume. Um, mm. so if I even need any props or anything, I can easily go to him. Um, but I think as for the clothing, mm. I'd much rather focus on doing something like that when I've got the time so I can make it myself and give yeah. myself that accomplishment um but as for props and stuff yeah i'd probably call out to nightlife um your yeah, nightlife workshop so awesome so i mean what is the scene i'm mean, like for us who are not from wellington you know we're outside you know and uh and even if you're not in auckland because i mean when i came out of film school back in 2007 i straight away got even before i left film school i was already invited to work on fil um, short films in auckland uh, once I heard that I was moving to Auckland and, um, you know, and I would have carried on with that, but like six months in, I had my car accident. So I was like, that's over. So, you know, I was doing like everything from like, um, actually they got me to do uh, con continuity. That was my first job out. And then from, um, because they kept me the, um, the script, the script got written about 11 times. A short script got rewritten 11 times. Yeah. And, <laughs> It was just like, just so, yeah. But like, then I went from like being a, uh, a continuity to being a cameraman to, uh, actually no, to being an AD, to being a cameraman on the same, sh same short film mm, mm. over a couple of weekends. And, uh, and then I worked on another one where I was just like, um, gosh, I think I was just a cameraman. It, it's like, I, you know, it's like one of those things like, that could have been my thing there, right? If, if the accident had to happen, but then it sort of like went into okay, I can't do that, so I was, I'll do writing. So I went and took my well, everything I knew about writing and what I'd wanted because I used to do stage as well, and um, did stage for about six, five years, I think, and then I went up to film school, and then so I knew how to put. I mean, even before I got to film school, I knew how to put this um, stuff together. This was asking about you know, did, have you considered film school and if not if why if so if not so there's things that you know like uh, the practical side of things you can pick up very quickly compared to what you can pick up in classes sitting there and sitting there and sitting there mm -hmm. um did you um do you see yourself learning filmmaking or do you want to just go off like watching youtube videos watching more films watching behind the, like i used to do like before i even went to film school i was watching behind the scenes and all that you know um of the dvds and all that yeah so what how do you think you're gonna like um step up into filmmaking 
once you go, okay, I'm, now I'm ready for that. Yeah, I'm I'm somebody who learns hands on rather than listening to theory. Um, so I'd much rather grab a camera, go and have you know, go and shoot some stuff, see what looks good, see what doesn't. From that, you know, it'd be like, oh, I should have done this, I should have done that. Teach me yeah. to do more things, so on and so forth. And YouTube is an open resource of a lot of teaching. Um, yeah. So, you know, I don't mind watching that visual. It's just sitting in a class here and blah, blah, blah. I, I turn off. Um, yeah. So, yeah, it's always been either YouTube videos or learning hands-on. So, Yeah, I think, I mean, now I basically would say to people just don't even bother with film school and stuff because, yeah. because of the amount of, um, man, the amount of, material that's online it's amazing like you said i mean like back in 2003 there was none of that like for me yeah. like this when i went to film school was it 2003 to 2006 three years there um yeah and was it 456 something like that 456 and now like just after that right just everything was on youtube just after that and you could you know i've learned how to make meat <laughs> from watching uh you know never made meat learned how to make, yeah. make meat by watching a YouTube person do it. And, yeah. you know, it's just, I think the other thing is that like, there's a, uh, there is a series of videos from a lady called um, Film Courage. She does a site called, um, like on YouTube channel called Film Courage. And she has all these uh, like directors and writers on, you know, just doing, interviews like you know like joe reagan does it with all these personalities she does it with just mm -hmm. film people and television people man and yeah. like i only discovered them about two months ago and i've been sharing snippets of that on our website on this website you know on uh, sorry on the comic trade facebook site and listening to these guys just talk about storytelling and what works what doesn't work is just amazing and so compared to her just hearing one person tell you that in class right for three years compared to a hundred to 200 people who tell you that in a year just by watching mm, the video mm. and getting all the different ideas that's what i think is yeah. and plus you don't end up with debt <laughs> you know yeah oh, and i was i was gonna say the one of the cool things about going into a, a course or studying it is of course you've got industry standard people there people that have been in the industry for years and they know what they're talking about and the differences between a youtube channel mainly and learning firsthand is yeah. you can like i can ask you a question and you answer it right? right if i'm watching your youtube video and i got to ask you a question you may be too busy to respond you may not see it i might yeah. not get the reply so doing a class you can ask those questions you can start learning and that's mm. what differentiates between i suppose doing a course and doing yeah. youtube videos so well, if, yeah, the, you're if right. you're able to get a mix of the two then you're away laughing so. well i think with these zoom things that they're coming up to having like online classes you know that's kind mm. of like man i mean i've got a friend who's um who did an accounting course and you know two two grand if he needed yeah. you know to get his ticket and he, he was able to pull it off within about uh, like the last paper he did, I don't know, I think it was about 500 or something. It was, he was able to pull it off within a couple of months. Or it may yeah. even be two months. Would it, if he was in a class, it would be whole years of just, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know. That's why I kind of consider, um, think like, this whole lockdown thing has basically made people think about how to learn in a different way, apart from being stuck in a classroom. And also yeah. businesses, right? Especially, you know, as you experience, like, okay, I'm, I'm going to be a tour guide on Lord of Rings, which is epic. You've basically had to study. You've spent, how long did you study for that? Because I mean, oh, uh, I pretty much knew, I, I knew everything. Um, it sounded like a know-it-all. Um, but since 2001, I studied the films for 15 years. So right. I already knew most of the stuff I needed to know. So mm -hmm. training, it was more just, learning where the locations were learning exactly what happened at that location yeah. uh, as for all the trivia stuff already had that so not long at all mm. and then and you've got like, yes i'm in and boom yeah. you know yeah. and and then you got to what was i mean like that really hit the industry really hard i mean not only just tourism but film as well 
and uh, and you know and everything around that uh the theater and stuff so between you going i don't have a job to what am i going to do next how did you figure that out because i know a lot of people like who aren't even who don't even have to worry about that situation of i don't have a job you know there's a mm. lot of people sitting at home just going i don't need to get a job right mm -hmm. because i get this and so they'll just sit and sit and sit. But what was it like for you who who's out there for 15 years? You're love, you know, you're in, you got yeah. your, uh, you know, you got the doors open. Yeah. And you it's shut again just so quickly to where you go, okay, you know what? I could just sit back or I could do something. What made you decide to do something? <laughs> All right, well, I'm going to be brutally honest, and this might uh, cause some more hate towards me, but it's all right. Um, I am forever grateful what the Ministry of Social Development do. Um, yeah. I've got assistance from them uh, quite, you know, for most of my life, um, and it's been great. Mm. I did not want to turn into one of those guys that, you know, are in the basement of their parents' house gaming all day, knowing that money is sweet as because they get the benefit. I don't mm. want that. Didn't want that. Don't even mm. want the benefit now. Yeah. So that's where I started thinking. I was like, right, what can I do to A, improve myself, B, improve the community, and C, keep me out of trouble? And that's kind of where it sort of started from. I'm doing, you know, my media company and then stemming to this is the fact that I didn't want to rely on the government. And I think, and for, I mean, like, I'm in the same boat. Right, I've been in the same boat uh, on and off uh, myself, and so I mean, like with 2019, with me was like, ah, uh, or 2018 was like, what do I do, you know? And it wasn't me who said what I do. Um, um, it actually was. It was like, I need to do something, and you know, and here we are. Like I mean, three years later, uh, had three three conventions, uh, putting out comic books, uh, creating toys. At the moment you can't see that properly oh, cool. but yeah creating our own little yeah. chibi um 3d printed toys uh yeah. you know doing posters like you said what do i do with the community we've got a whole convention that actually benefits the community and i think this is where my um i've always hit the like the balancing of like how much do i rely on this and how much i do must do for myself and i think mm -hmm. a lot of times um people i don't i can't i mean because of my brain I mean, I, 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 my brain shut down for about, I think, two years. Like, because after my shop closed, I was like, I just shut down because I went to like deep mm. depression because of like, you know, and I was yeah. like, then I was like, okay, I can't be like this for the rest of my life. I mean, the money's mm. sweet, mm. right? Like you said, money's sweet. I can just sit on my ass and do nothing all day long mm. because the money's sweet. And I think that is a great thing. But I think, like you said, what what do we what do i do and i think it's more like what do i want for myself is that is that what you thought like what do i want for myself or you know is this what i want you know because yeah. a lot of people kind of go like yeah i'm happy with what i have but then how long is that happiness going to last is it like every tuesday or wednesday <laughs> oh, no, sorry, no. every wednesday thursday friday because it's a, you know because it's a, you get a doll you, get, you buy the food, you pay the bills, you got the money for the beer. Yeah. That's how it's going, <laughs> Pretty much. Right? That's a cycle. Yeah. That's a cycle of being on, um, on, on, yeah, on there. And that's, and then it's like, then comes sun, Sunday, mm. then comes Monday. And then those two days you're going, got to wait till Tuesday, Wednesday. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, you, you, you know, you said, this is what I want to do for myself. What I think, but what is it keeps you doing that though? Because once you said, okay, this is what I want to do, but what is it going to keep you doing? What keeps you doing that? What keeps me doing it? Um, as cliche as it's going to sound, my kids and my fiance. Um, you know, I want to set up a good sort of future for my kids. Um, and if that means, you know, being proactive about things and saying, hey, look, if you have a dream, follow it. Um, I mean, I did X Factor just to show my kids that if you've got a dream, you should chase it. I didn't succeed on X Factor, but I did it just for them. Um, but yeah, it's just, you know, setting up that family um, family zone and setting up a future for your family. Um, if you're sitting down 
you know, pl- you know, playing with your fingers, so to speak, and thinking about what if, it's never going to happen. Mm. Get off your ass and go and think about what can I do now, you know? Yeah. So. Well, yeah. that's what, that, that get off your ass is what parents used to tell us. I mean, dads used to, always used to tell us, you know, why are you sitting around? You know, yeah, and now it's like, outside, it's warm. <laughs> yeah, and now it's like, when, uh, they're not allowed to say that anymore. Yeah, you know, it's almost it's it's more it's more like it's almost like taboo to say get off your ass and do something, whereas mm. you know in the like in the nineties eighties you're like get outside, you know, go help mum with that and or something. Yeah. But now yeah. it's like oh, I've got my computer, I got my you know Game Boy, whatever, Xbox, I'm good, all day long, yeah. all night long, and I think. You can't make a living from that unless you're a gamer for YouTube and you're monetizing, sweet as. Yeah. But if you're not, then what are you doing with yourself? What are you doing with your life? You want to mm-hmm. create a legacy for when, you know, you pass away and sitting around on your ass doing nothing is going to not achieve anything, you know? What's the, I mean, the question is then, like, what sort of legacy do uh, you want to leave behind for yourself? Well, I, I want to leave a legacy behind where, you know, I'm known for, for trying, for attempting, instead of just sitting around thinking about what if. You know, I want my kids to grow up thinking to themselves, all right, I want this. How do I go about it? No, I want this. I'm just going to sit and wait. No, you go out and get it. You know, so that's kind of legacy I want to leave behind. There's, there is, there is, that's something that you don't hear often now. I don't know why, but we don't hear that whole um, legacy thing. I mean, I've I've talked to a lot of my friends in uh, in my circle, right? Who 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 think like that? I think like that. I think about leaving mm-hmm. a legacy. What's my legacy? I'm gonna leave a char- um, you know, uh, a character behind. I'm gonna leave a business behind. I'm gonna leave. Uh, I don't have any kids of my own, but I do mm-hmm. have some nephews and nieces, so I'll be able mm-hmm. to leave that behind for them to carry on and have put our foot you know establish something that's going to be here after i'm gone i think Mm. a lot of times um we don't get that message about that anymore about for the future you know like what's the what's for the future because we're living we've been taught in a way especially on the eight like between school leaving to about maybe 28 so like between like say about 10 year period of your life you're basically just um wandering around Mm. you know just like just wandering around you're not thinking about legacy you don't have you know if if you're um if you don't have um, guardians or um dad in the home saying this is what you could do because your mom's always going to be the one hey hey you know Mm. you know uh come to me when you need a hug but the dad's the ones (laughs) going to get out there do something and yeah. and they're the ones who are saying, "Hey, we've we've left something for you. Now you got to leave something for your, your some you know whoever's coming with you next. Which could mm. be your kids, could be the rest of your family." And I think that message of legacy is being lost. I remember being taught about legacy maybe about 50, twenty years ago. I haven't had that much in the last ten years. The word, yeah, that no, much. it's not. It's commonly unheard of. Mm. Um. In finishing, we're up to about almost an hour. And um, in, in finishing, is there anything you want to say? I mean, we've, we've you know we've almost pretty got to a pretty cool little end there with the legacy thing, because I think mm. um, that's something I think it's um, noteworthy and thought worthy. You know, something you can, people can listen to and say, "Hey, yeah, what is what am I leaving behind?" But so, final words, you up to. Five minutes, as long as you want. I'll um, last, um, yeah, final words, and then we'll close off after you. Okay, cool. Um, I suppose my encouragement to everybody is if you feel like, you know, you're at the crossroads and you have no idea what to do with yourself, it's okay to take a step back, sit down, take a breather, and think about what you'd like to make in, you know, in your life. And uh, if, if you're convinced that it's something you want to do, and go and chase it no matter what it's going to take no matter what it's going to cost go and chase it and if it's going to cost something quite big then you know you're going to be able to find a way especially if it's meant to be um 
that's just something that's always been a part of me and uh, always will be a part of me. Hence why, you know, the decisions I make and the life choices I make and whatnot. Um, but apart from that, um, thanks for listening to me blab on. <laughs> uh, it's been great. And um, yeah, hopefully I get to see you around the pop daddy channels at some point. Uh, it'd be good to see you guys. Awesome, man. Um, yeah. yeah. I mean, I didn't, I didn't realize that. I mean, like when we were, when I got in touch with you about this and when I was, I didn't realize your, how much you've been, how much you had done, um, you know, in the last few years, what you were involved with and having someone like you talk about, um, acting, you know, and from Wellington and the theater and film and TV, it's just, it's, it's been a real blast to be honest. Uh, I think you're the, probably the first, no, you're the second actor I've ever, uh, interviewed like this. I mean, the last one I did was, um, Stu, uh, Stuart uh, from Shortland Street, who lives up here. He's a great, uh, he's an elderly gentleman who's got a couple kids or something. I don't watch yeah. Shortland Street, so I'm not nah. so sure. <laughs> uh, but um, but yeah, I interviewed, interviewed him on radio in 2018, so that was the last time I interviewed an actor. But this has been a yeah. blast, man. I mean, I, um, it's just so cool to actually discuss with you what you know. And actually, how old are you? Like, because I, I, I mean. You look young to me. How old do I look? Around 30. That's a good guess. Um, I keep forgetting my actual age. I was born in 87, and I'm pretty sure I'm 33, maybe 34. <laughs> you kind of get to that period in your life when you're like, I'm either this or this. Whereas when yeah. you're like younger, you're like, you know, I'm definitely 25. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah, I mean. Um, and Sorry, this was like, like, calling. Give me a sec. Sure. There we go. All right. So she can wait. Yeah. <laughs> well, we can close off here and let you talk to your partner. So thank you so much, Axel. I hope um, you know you do well. Your shop all does well, and you um, and your career does well. And uh, you know, I think hope you. you see some stuff that you do yourself. I mean, like just you shoot yourself uh, stories you tell because I think, like I say, everyone's got a story to tell. But I mean, you actually are learning how to tell a story as well as being part in front of the in front of the screen i mean in front of the camera and doing it it's just yeah um all the best dude thank you for um, hey. hanging out with me and talking um all the best thank for you your for business me. and for your career and and with your kids and hopefully you. you'll leave an amazing legacy for your kids and hey, you too you too and all the all best right. with everything you're doing cheers mate all right guys awesome. we'll see you next time uh we'll see you on our next stream on the narrative uh hopefully you guys have um, got a lot out of what we talked about wherever you are be safe keep well and thanks axel we'll catch you next time bud thanks guys see ya hey guys malfunction here from the narrative thank you for checking out my channel um like subscribe do all the good things